What's up, everybody? This is Chaz with Golden Butter Sports. And I want to talk about an issue that I have with some of our experts that's out here concerning your Dallas Cowboys and my Dallas Cowboys. Some of the experts are talking about, hey, the Cowboys uh, need to draft a tight end in the first round. And I think the Cowboys are picking number 26 and the draft if they don't trade out of that or if they don't trade up. But if they stay put, the premier or so-called premier prognosticators are predicting that, yeah, tight end is the best way to go. They can see the Cowboys drafting the tight end. I, for one, am totally all against that. So, and the reason why I'm totally against that is because I've checked out some of the history of first-round picks when it comes to drafting tight ends. Now, keep this in mind. I do not claim to be some kind of guru or expert in the draft. I, that's not what I'm about. I'm just about trying to spread knowledge as best I can, and that's what it means to let the butter spread. We're basically saying we're letting our knowledge spread to the best of our ability. That's what Golden Butter Sports is all about, letting that butter spread. And so what I'm about to do is spread a little knowledge that I know that I've seen about drafting tight ends in the first round and why the Dallas Cowboys should not draft a tight end in the first round. I don't care what pick it is in the first round. Do not do that, Dallas Cowboys. And here's why. I'm going to go over some of the first round draft picks for tight ends and I want you to let us know what you think. And, okay, we'll start with Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts was drafted fourth overall. Now, what kind of numbers did he have? He had some pretty good numbers. He had some real good numbers for a rookie tight end. And considering now, this is a passing league, so everybody wants to wing the ball around. But for a rookie, he came into Atlanta, and the situation wasn't good, but he made do with what he had. But did he make a Super Bowl or a playoff impact on the team? I, no, not really. But was he good? Yeah, no disrespect to the brother. What kind of numbers did he have? As a fourth overall pick, I'm telling you, if you draft this high, that guy has to be an instant impact. Darn near carrying you to a Super Bowl almost or somewhere close, at least playoffs. Kyle Pitts in 2021, his first year. Now, that's all I'm talking about, first year. Kyle Pitts had six day catches for 1,026 yards. That's pretty good for a rookie tight end, right? Yeah, it is. Well, Cincinnati said thank you very much for picking Kyle Pitts because Cincinnati picked right behind him, number five. Well, guess who they picked? They picked DeMar Chase. Jamar Chase, I'm sorry, Jamar Chase. Well, what did he do? Well, Jamar Chase had 81 catches for 1,455 yards, 13 touchdowns, and during there won the Super Bowl. Well, what did Kyle Pitts do as far as touchdowns? Kyle Pitts only had one touchdown. That's it. That's all. Next. Let's go to 2019. There was two in 2019 that was taken. In the first round, Detroit. I don't know what's going on with Detroit. They seem like they're getting better, but Detroit. Detroit, they decided to draft TJ Hawkinson. Pretty good tight end. But we're talking about first year now. He was drafted eight overall. Well, what's his numbers? 32 catches for 367 yards, just two TDs. The next person drafted in the first round was the Denver Broncos, Noah Fant. Who? Font, Fant, F-A-N-T. You can look him up. He was drafted 20th overall in the first round. Okay. What did he do? 40 catches. For 562 yards, three touchdowns. 
Yeah, that's it. Go down to 2018, Hayden Hurst. I don't know who this cat is. I don't. I No disrespect to the brother, but I don't know who he is. But he was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in 2018. He had 25 catches or 13. No, he had 13 catches for 163 yards, one touchdown. He was drafted 25th overall. That's somewhere where the Cowboys are going to be drafting if they don't trade out. Right around that number, 25, 26, somewhere around there. You can't draft a tight end and then expect 13 catches for 163 yards. No. Okay, well, let's go to 2017. 2017, you had Tampa Bay. You had three tight ends. Let me, let me look at this again. You had three tight ends, three in the first round now. Tampa Bay drafted O.J. Howard. He was 19th overall. He had 26 catches for 432 yards, six touchdowns. Six touchdowns, pretty good. But 26 catches? Come on, man. What about Evan Ingram? Boy, that was the New York Giants pick in 2017. Yeah, he was just going to destroy the Dallas Cowboys. He was drafted 23rd overall. He had 60, He had 64 catches for 722 yards, six touchdowns. He balled out for a tight end. But you can get this in the third round, though. You really can. Who was next in 2017? The Cleveland Browns. Cleveland. David Njoku. He had uh, 32 catches for 386 yards, four touchdowns. He was drafted 29th overall. Cleveland must have been good that year. I don't know. But anyway, who pays attention to Cleveland like that? I'm not dissing Cleveland, but people just don't pay attention to him like that. Not right now. 2014, the Detroit Lions again. They drafted 10th overall. And they drafted Eric Ebron. Now, when you're in the top 10, you need to be making an immediate impact. He had 25 catches for 248 yards, one touchdown. That's not an immediate impact. Cincinnati Bengals, 2013. Tyler Eifert, y'all remember him? Some of y'all don't, but I do. He was pretty good. What did he do his first year? Well, he was drafted 21st overall, and he had 39 catches for 455 yards, 445 yards and two touchdowns. That's it. Cincinnati did it again. Can you believe this? In three years late, three years earlier, in 2010, they drafted Jerome Gresham. I remember that, brother. I think he came out of Oklahoma. Jerome Gresham, 21st overall. He had 52 catches for 471 yards and four touchdowns. Yeah, you get that in the second, third round, can't you? I believe you can, but not in the first round, though. No, not in the first round. The Detroit Lions again, man, they come up here a lot. 2009, Brandon Pettigrew, he was drafted 20th overall. What did he do his first year? For a first-round draft pick, he had 30 catches for 346 yards, two touchdowns. Next, 2008, Dustin Keller. He was drafted 30th overall, somewhere around where the Cowboys are. He had 48 catches for 535 yards. Three touchdowns. Hmm. The great Greg Olson. You know the guy that's calling football games now on Fox? Took Troy Aikman's spot because, you know, Troy Aikman left. Okay, this, that's the same Greg Olson. That's him. 2007, he was drafted 31st overall. He had 39 catches for 391 yards. Two touchdowns. Yeah. San Francisco in 2006 drafted Vernon Davis. Now, guess how high they drafted him? He was drafted six overall. Listen, when you drafted in the top 10, you have to make an immediate impact. You understand me? <laughs> Vernon Davis, his first year, had 20 catches for 265 yards, three touchdowns. That's what he did as a six overall draft pick. Yeah. That's what he did. 
Mercedes Lewis was drafted in the same year, 2006, by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mercedes Lewis was drafted 28th overall, 13 catches, 126 yards, one touchdown. 2005, Heath Miller, 30 catches. Oh, no, he he had 39 catches for 459 yards. He had six touchdowns. He was drafted 30th overall in 2005 by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, check this out. Kellen Winslow, not that Kellen Winslow, not senior, Kellen Winslow the second. Kellen Winslow, not the one that used to play for the San Diego Chargers with Dan Fouts and John Jefferson and uh, Charlie Jonas. I'm telling my age, I remember them players. We talking about the other Kellen Winslow, 2004 by the Cleveland Browns. You know, there's a recurring thing. Some of these teams... Just don't get it. They keep drafting these tight ends in the first round. They drafted Kellen Winslow sixth overall. I told you. <laughs> if you're drafting that high, what do they need to be? Immediate impact to the point to where they carry you to the playoffs or something. Okay. He had five catches for 50 yards, no touchdowns. He wasn't hurt that year. He was hurt the second year. Now, he started balling out later on. Most of these tight ends that I'm mentioning, they balled out later, much later. Most of them did. Now, there are a few outliers, and I'm going to get to one in a second. The New England Patriots in 2004 drafted Ben Watson 32nd overall in 2004. <sighs> he had two catches for 16 yards, no touchdowns. He wasn't hurt. <laughs> the great Dallas Clark of 2003 was drafted 24th overall. Okay, somewhere where the Cowboys will be drafted. He had 29 catches for 340 yards, one touchdown. That's the great Dallas Clark. Remember Dallas Clark? Him and Peyton Manning, used to, it seemed like they hooked up all the time. Nah, not really. <laughs> Now, here's one outlier. Here's another outlier. Jeremy Shockey. And that's where I'm stopping. Jeremy Shockey of the New York Giants, 2002. He terrorized Dallas for a minute or two. Jeremy Shockey was drafted 14th overall. He balled out. He did. He had 74 catches for 894 yards. He only had two touchdowns, though. Those are your tight ends. From 2002 up to now. And what I'm telling you, Dallas Cowboys, you better check your history about these tight ends. You can get a tight end late on. You already got two. You don't need to draft them in the first round. Not that. You can draft the offensive lineman, which I think you should do. Somebody like Zach Martin, that's a stud. You can draft somebody like that. Or if you want to do something else, Draft on the defensive side and help Michael Parsons out. Get your defensive stud on the other side if you can pull it. Or you can draft you a good wide receiver that, that can that can really make an instant impact. Somebody like Randy Moss. Ooh, that hurt. Yeah. That's I'm still hurt for I'm still hurt about Randy Moss. But anyway, to the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboy fans, listen. Do not draft a tight end in the first round. It would be foolish to do so. Second, third round, and second, third round, maybe fourth round, you know, you probably pull that. But not in the first, y'all. Don't do that. Well, y'all let me know what y'all think. This is Chaz with Golden Butter Sports. Letting that butter spread. We out.